Happy Podcast. My name is Brandi Hofer, your host. Thank you so much for being here today. I sure do appreciate your time. Uh, this week we have on Katie Jeffcoat, and she uh, really talks about like what is happiness and the science behind happiness and uh, her life story of transitioning from a lawyer <laughs> to what she does now. So find out more all about her. Uh, she approached us to come on and I love meeting new people and it was super great to just like hear about everything her what she does with her family um and how she has these family meetings and how her journey um of enrichment and 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 sourcing out happiness not only that like doing that for herself but helping others uh and she has a podcast as well so i will have that information in the notes for you and we talk about it in this show so enjoy that hope you all are having a good summer so far i want to know what you're doing uh share it in the community you can join our free sketchbook project um if you're working to connect to your creativity and you're just getting started the sketchbook project is the perfect place to start um and we love seeing what everyone's exploring of course with that and the portrait class and mural classes for artists and um we also have a new one it's a diy diy portrait class or oh my gosh <laughs> we no it's diy like interior murals so if you're looking to um we have like do's and don'ts tips for free i'll put those in the notes too for you i'll write that down so i don't forget it do's and don'ts tips in the notes um yeah so that's like what to do and what not to do and what supplies to use if you're looking at like doing a cool little space behind like on your wall in your office or a bathroom or your kid's bedroom um you can do it yourself there's so many ways or just hire someone too <laughs> if, if you're like actually no which I can totally understand and that's what I do when I like I'm I'm building a new site and I'm just like you know I don't feel like doing this because it's not my area of expertise it's not where I thrive in fact it's where I get very frustrated and we always know and I always say uh, if if you're an avid listener time is our most precious commodity so why not doing do like why not save time doing the thing and do the things that you love and then um thriving and doing the things you love and putting your energy into those places as opposed to say uh doing the things you hate more which right now actually this afternoon currently all our hockey equipment is being cleaned uh at bioclean disaster services locally uh and jody like looked me in the eye he he's the one of the owners and founders along with his wife sharon and he's like i love cleaning I was like that's so good for you Jody because I don't in fact this was my husband's job and that's why I made my husband come I was like you guys can geek out over cleaning hockey equipment because I think it's super gross um and but so he's taking us through like uh step by step and he's going to give us a homemade recipe so people can wash like gross stuff like that at home um and they of course support people through really hard times like the hardest times of their life when they're like sewer uh floods and all that and things we don't prepare for but happen and so they're there to support our community in that and i think they do a very good job and they love what they do which i always support everyone in following their passion and finding out what they love and doing it and then paying the people and the experts to do the things that you don't love at all. So <laughs> like I really don't like scrubbing toilets, so I worked um very hard. I'm like I made like early financial this is one my actually my first financial goal was to make enough that I could pay to have a weekly cleaning in my house and I could spend more time podcasting, building uh special emails our weekly inspiration newsletter writing my book painting paintings teaching classes so then i don't find joy in making spaces squeaky clean in fact i put on slippers so i just can ignore it so <laughs> everyone has their thing right um so find yours find your happiness um so uh we have some in kd in this podcast Katie has like prompts in finding joyful moments in life, finding purpose and satisfaction, 
and she has tips and she takes you behind the like science of happiness because she really delved into that. So she's the expert in that field. So I won't say any more about it (laughs) at all. Um, And oh, I had one more thing I wanted to talk to you about. Oh yeah. Okay. So we are doing two things this week and the first being Nouveau. We are going to be signing our book. And if you love this happiness stuff, and if you love um, what I'm going to say in the newsletter this week is I get to's, and which we've talked about before, but I love bringing them up again because practicing your I get to's instead of I have to um, really enriches your life and takes you back into the gratitude space without thinking too hard about it. Because if you think, if you say your I get to's, even like weekly, it helps like um, you just start at the beginning of your day and you say, I get to sleep in this safe warm bed because a lot of people in the world don't. Uh, Secondly, I have these beautiful legs that I get to run and walk and I'm healthy individual. Like mine are going to look and hear uh, sound (laughs) differently. Differently than yours, of course. Um, I get the magic ability and time to create. I have beautiful, health, healthy children, you know? So really connect to your I get to's. That's what I want you to think about uh, today. And um, write them down. And I'll have the prompts in the notes here in this podcast. But I'll also have the prompts in our weekly inspiration. So uh, you can sign up for that at brandyhofer.ca. Or it's a whole chapter in our book, Color Me Happy, See Your Everyday Ordinary as Extraordinary. So if you like our prompts and weekly inspiration, uh, feel free to support us and order our book. Uh, It's got five out of five stars on Amazon and they're the best stars and reviews of all time. And they make me cry reading them. (laughs) And so it's just like, you know, you pour yourself into something and you don't exactly know why you're doing it. And then that's the reason. So really, really special. So thank you everyone for leaving reviews. I appreciate your time and thoughts and words. Uh, And if you haven't checked out our book, please do so. Again, that will be in the notes. And enjoy this really great episode. And uh, feel free to reach out to Katie and uh, find her podcast uh, wherever you get your podcasts. And We'll chat with you soon. I always am like, I'm going to do a three minute intro and that's it. And I'll stop talking and then I just get chatting with you and I can't help it. So, (laughs) um, uh, yes. Okay. Okay. I see like a shiny object and I forget what I'm talking about or I'm doing. Not by yet. I, what I was coming up this week before I talked about, I get to's is that at Nouveau Laser and Aesthetic Center, they're having this big evening and it's free. So you book your tickets um, at Nouveau, uh, like on their link tree under their Instagram, Nouveau Laser and Aesthetic Center. So if you're local, um, we're having an evening where I'm signing my book and I have prints and they have like live demos and giveaways and prizes and a night of like mingling and fun. So if you're itching to get out um, and treat yourself, that's a perfect place to be on Wednesday, the 23rd from 6 to 9 p.m. And then, really big week, I know, but exciting. I like, it fills my social cup. I love my community, and this is why I love what I do. Um, On Thursday evening, I've never done this before, but I'm very excited to announce that we will be at the Cheesery during their you pick. So it's, you get to gather wildflowers, and they're like, I swear it's, I went last week, or this week, sorry. One too many matches today. I went this week. Was it Monday? Yes, it's Friday now. Um, and I went to experience it first and see if I could sketch out flowers. <laughs> I know I can. I've been sketching for so long. Uh, but I just wanted to make sure. Um, and so I brought all my chalk pastels and stuff like that. So materials will be supplied. It is like escaping to Europe. I'm not even kidding. It is like a f- freaking dream out there. And so on Thursday night from six to nine, the tickets are almost sold out. So make sure, um, how many things am I going to have in these notes? Do's and don'ts murals, ticket links, ticket links. So I'll have ticket links the, um, night at Nouveau 
um, is like kind of like a fancier dress up night. Um, not like super fancy, but like dress up and, and it's cute. And then um, the gather your flowers and sketch them with me. So it's a collaboration between myself and the cheesery. So you gather your like sunflowers and your drag snapdragons and then you sketch them with chalk pastels. So it's all included. The materials will all be there. They even have snack options and stuff like that and treats. And um, so those tickets are $79 and then the Nouveau thing is free. So the tickets are in, uh, links are in there. And I'll stop talking now so you can get to the podcast. But I'm very excited for next week. I can't wait to see everyone. Both nights are going to be equally amazing in very uh, different ways. And I hope to see you all there. And uh, thank you for your time, my friend. So welcome, Katie. Welcome, Katie. Thank you for coming. I like to record right away because I like to catch all the magic bits at the beginning that no one hears. And um, yes, I am an artist. And then it expanded into um, ways to connect with others. And then, of course, I wrote a book because I just... Uh, it's another form of expression and it was a fun adventure and I see you have a book too which I didn't know yeah. I know you have a podcast um so when did you write your book it's women who impact yeah I uh was a contributing author in a book um gosh I feel like it's been five years already time flies I feel like that time during COVID is this time that was a dark hole and either time expanded or it didn't. And I don't even know how to say it's either before COVID or after COVID. Uh, but it was, I did it years before COVID and, um, yeah, my chapter is not on happiness at all. Really. It's really just more about money mindset and how we as women like think about money. Cause I think for a long time, especially in my generation, uh, you know, people don't talk about it. Women don't, don't just like go out for happy hour and chat about money. So I was like, Let's what are you investing in? What are you investing in? Right? Well, yeah, yeah no, like, like typically, no, that is not the conversation. And I really resonate with what you're saying because, um, it took me till about 33 to realize that I could run my own business and that was okay. And that was allowed. And, and and I'm allowed to want money like that took like Jen Sincero's uh, book, You're a Badass at Making Money, changed mm -hmm. my whole entire life. Wow. And and I still have issues around around that and accepting that in order to do the things that you want to do and accomplish the things you want to and give back in the way that you want to give back. Like you need money for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm the same way. Like I'm always telling people like, of course I want more money. And I think if you're a good person, good money, you know, money will do good. And if you're a bad person, you're going to figure out ways to, you know, spend that money maybe in ways that are not as successful or as a, you know, community driven. But the fact is like money doesn't, may not change you. It just may bring out other parts of you, but Anyway, mm -hmm. whole other mm -hmm. conversation. I mean, yeah, giving it power, right? I said to my dad, exactly. I'm like, I think dad that if I if I give and and I give back and uh I think I can be abundant and and make it work, my business work with that uh initiative and mindset. And I'm like, I think <laughs> and mm -hmm. here's hoping and it's so far um, is panning out. So just to let you all know that you can do that, right? You can, you can say that you want something and it is okay. And, and we play so much on that. Uh, Le Leah Guzman came, came on and she, she always talks about money mindset and like ripping up hundred dollar bills and putting it in her art and taking that power away. And it's really, it's, it's powerful to, uh, a powerful act. So, okay. You also have your beautiful podcast too. Do you want to talk about that? Sure. So I have a podcast called Everyday Happiness, Finding Harmony and Bliss, and it's everywhere that you listen to podcasts. And I am thinking about a transition into a newsletter happiness email type situation where I'm going to send an email twice a month because let's face it, we all get a lot of email. Uh, mm -hmm. but twice a month, something really happy and digestible and thought provoking in your inbox. So I do blogging already on my website. And I think that 
a little note from me and the uh, happiness mail will be really, really fun. So that's what I'm like obsessed about right now is this happiness email. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I, I listened a little bit to the podcast. You talk about um, things like, you know, when people are like, oh, she's just like sporting happiness. It's not. It's like there's so much more to that. There's so, there's so much more depth. Do you want to talk about that like daily routine and things that actually you set set up a structure and a foundation for that? Yeah. So happiness habits, right? There's all these ways where we can try to boost our happiness through our habits. But maybe let's start with what happiness is. Because I think a lot of people have a different interpretation. Like we all kind of think we know what happiness is. And I, beca because I'm a recovering lawyer, I needed the proof. So I went down a deep, deep hole of scientific research. And I think I've been able to distill what happiness is scientifically and why it matters. So happiness really is two prongs. So we have the first prong of happiness, which is what we most, most of us think about. It's joy, contentment, elatement, positive well-being combined with this idea that life is good and meaningful, worthwhile, right? This uh, happiness emotion. It's finding the perfect parking spot when you are going to the store. It's seeing a four-leaf clover, right? Whatever it is, hugging your child. It's finding, it's that joy of happiness. But the second prong, I really think is where all the magic is. And that's where we can really boost our happiness. We can actually change parts of our happiness, the way that we identify happiness, the parts that are in our control. So that is purpose and satisfaction. So purpose, that's purpose is how you feel when you're doing the thing you love. When you're in flow, when you're painting and you are just in flow and you love it. Purpose is how you feel when you're doing the thing you love. It can be academic research, your work, building a business, being involved in the community, being a parent, be so many things. Purpose is doing the thing you love. And then satisfaction is very simple, but we find it to be very hard to accomplish. And what satisfaction is, is wanting what you have more than what you want. So you want to appreciate what you have more than pining for what you want. And that is how you get true satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Gratitude. Yeah, gratitude, appreciation. There's all these things standing in our way in our human DNA that prevent us for, from appreciating what we have more than wanting more. There's the scientific principle called hedonic adaptation. And it's this idea that we are always wanting more. We're always wanting what's on the other side of the coin. We I get feel the big that. house. We want the bigger house. Yeah. We get the new car. The new car smell wears off. We, you know, get the new running shoes. We want new running shoes. We're never getting to the destination. What's on the other side of the coin is never, the, is never enough. We just keep flipping the coin. And so this, some people call it the hedonic treadmill because you're always on it. It's like you can't get off. Mm. And it's a scientific principle and it's based obviously in, you know, cognitive neuroscience. And it's really this idea that we're always going to want more. You get the job, you want another job. You get the promotion, you want a bigger promotion. So there's that friction there between appreciating what you have and wanting more. And especially for ambitious people, high achievers, business owners, uh, you know, a lot of people struggle with that. And it's really just part of life. It is in our DNA. It's the way that we are created as humans. Mm, do you have some tips and advice to how can people like come like center back into that, like uh, be, um, some exercises where, you know, you can get yourself out of that tailspin? Yeah. So there's one simple, I mean, there's so many simple ways to do this. One is, I'll give you two. One is gratitude and appreciation, right? Just really sitting with yourself. I'm grateful for, I appreciate, could be going for a walk, counting the leaves. It could be sitting with your child. Maybe you're reading a bedtime story and you're like, I'm grateful for this moment. Another thing that is very similar is this concept called savoring. Savoring. That is when we really take in the moment. 
So instead of sitting with my child and reading a bedtime story, I'm savoring that moment. I'm twirling his curly, curly hair. I'm smelling him as he is out of the bath and like so clean and fresh, right? I'm thinking about how much I'm in this moment, how I appreciate this, how I'm thinking about the letters uh, and the words on the pages, right? If he's reading the story, like what his voice sounds like, how he's, you know, whatever, like sounding out words and that kind of stuff. So that's savoring. That could be the same going for a walk. It could be uh, in your work if you're an artist or you're painting or you're creating anything. Maybe you're creating graphics for social media, right? It could be so many different ways that we use creativity. And it could be really savoring and being appreciative for the space and the time and the ink or whatever that that looks like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. In in my book, we call it I Get To. And, and you just like, yeah, you, you get to really because, you know, if I don't watch the news, but it's on at like my dad's house and the kids are like shocked. They're like, oh, my gosh, mom, look what's happening. I'm like, I know I can't sit in that because it causes panic and and whatnot. But when we think about our I get to is just having the like essentials right now mm -hmm. is is pretty powerful. It's a pretty powerful thing. Um there's this quote by, well, I'll do the quote first. And then it's, um, and when you started talking, it reminded me of it. Um, uh, it is, oh, I'll, I'll get it. It'll come to my head. Wake up, Brandy. <laughs> um, the greatest gift you can give yourself is to find something that you're naturally adept at and find out a way to make a living at it. Because if you do that, Every day will be a play day. You're never battling upstream. You love what you do. And if you love what you do, why do you want to stop doing it? Judge Judy says that. Um, so I want to hear about the transition from being a lawyer coming into what you're doing. I, I want to hear that story. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. It is, you know, like lots of us, it was never a straight and narrow path. But it started out that way, believe it or not. So... I, uh, I'm going to tell you the story really fast, but we're going to go back to the beginning. I grew up in a town of 2,006 people in the middle of a cornfield in Minnesota. And when I was seven years old, I was like, this is not the place for me. Like, there needs to be more. I need more world. Like, this does not feel right. And uh, having that intuition then, I didn't really understand what all of it meant. Took some unpacking. But I knew I wanted to get out. And the only way that I knew I could do that was either be a doctor or a lawyer because those are the only two professions that make enough money that you could possibly leave the town that you're in. And so I couldn't be a doctor because blood makes me queasy and I don't really like to touch people. So lawyer, it was it. So I decided at seven years old that I would be a lawyer and I was on the straight and narrow path, never wavered, never took a foot, not even a toe off of that path, was always going to be a lawyer, did everything to be a lawyer, never experienced or tried anything else. I was only going to be a lawyer until I was a lawyer, got a job in Washington, D.C. at one of the largest law firms in the world doing federal court trial litigation. And I did that for a number of years. So now we've uh, just fast forwarded like decades of life. And my husband and I are having our first child, which is very exciting. So many ways, reasons why. And I knew I would still go back to work because I just assume like that's what it was. This was my passion. And I had that baby, held that baby for the first time. And I was like, it was like magic. It was like glitter and sparkles and rainbow and fireworks and all the things you can imagine. And I was like, I'm never going back to work again. And my husband was like, who is this woman? And I'm like, I don't know who she is, but she's not the person she was 20 minutes ago. And I, uh, it, it was just one of those moments, right, in that time. And what I realized was I used being a lawyer for a means to an end. It was my way out, and I had achieved that, and I had had success practicing law, and I felt like that chapter was done. Now, had I not had this catalyst of having this child, maybe other things would have changed. Uh, but for me, that that's how it shook out. And really, law school was a means to an end to create a life that was sustainable that would allow me to do other things. So. Stayed home, raised some kids. 
I'm much older than you, but we raised some kids. I don't think you're that much older than me. <laughs> maybe I'll be 45 this year. Okay. So oh. you're like, you've got uh, like maybe eight. I'm not good at quick math, but like, yeah, like Little seven, shy eight of years. A decade, yeah. I mean, yeah. once you have kids, I feel like we're all sitting at the same stage of life ish. We are. <laughs> we all understand one another. Yeah. And when you talk about that switch and shift and every parent knows, every parent knows. And I always think about it in this, like, because obviously I think in this way of, of really visual things. And um, I always think of it in the world was black and white. And once I had children, I was living in color. Mm-hmm. Like everything was more rich. Every experience, every experience was more meaningful. And then living life uh, through seeing the world through their eyes is so powerful and, and so fun. And when we think about what we should include in a day, they, they bring us back and down to earth and more present. And, and, you know, you start playing again and you start, uh, like if you let yourself, you have, there's a point where you have to be like, I'm going to let go and, and I'm going to do this. And, um, Harvey, uh, what's his name in happiest toddler on the block. Very good book for parents. Um, he calls it playing the boob and it's letting go of your inhibitions and just joining them instead of like, having that superiority sort of level and, and connecting with them on their level. And honestly, that was the best advice I've ever gotten. Well, not read (laughs) and taken away from something. Um, it, it's just so fun. I know it's hard and I know it's frustrating, uh, and, and it's different and it's a shift, but gosh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I know it's really crazy. I'm, uh, going to totally throw you off and tell you a piece of advice that I got that I thought was so surprising. (laughs) Your listeners are going to be like, who is this lady? But it is about happiness. We got advice that said, never make a happy baby happier. So if the baby is sleeping in the car seat and it looks like its head is turned, don't try to fix its head. It will be fine. Or if the baby is, you know, playing with blue blocks and you think that you know, red and yellow blocks would also be very fun for them. Don't try to make a happy baby happier. Like if a happy baby is happy. Like j- don't try. And I always think that is so fun. Like nap time, especially like don't fix the blanket, obviously, unless it's like over their head or something crazy. But I mean, in real like life, we would never do that. But, you know. Oh, my husband is one of those helicopters. He's like, don't you think they're breathing weird? And I'm like, absolutely not. Do not fucking touch them. <laughs> I know, right? But it's so hard. It's so hard. But that was that was our like new parent advice fi- almost 15 years ago now. Yeah, it, it it's great advice. And and I mean, I think it just takes a lot of like, you know, consciousness and kind of going with the flow at the same time, right? It's this like crazy balancing act and and you gotta know when to you're like teetering on a fence and you gotta know when to jump into which yard, right? And and uh it's exhausting, but super fun. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun. And, you know, I have an 11 year old now and he's really into roller coasters, like the Ooh, science of roller yeesh. coasters and like how they work. And he's always trying to tell me how safe they are and they're safer than a car. And he's got ah. it all figured out. And he does this like YouTube channel called kid roller coaster, where he talks about his experience on all these roller coasters, but he never shows his face because boundaries right uh but he's obsessed with it so he thinks for spring break his happiest week would be to go try all the roller coasters and he thinks i think that this would be my happiest day too so now we've graduated from being in the moment and playing dress up and blocks to riding roller coasters and he's like don't worry mom this one will be fine you can do this or you can't do this and i'm always like what the heck have i gotten myself into so yeah, that that is my nightmare. <laughs> I know. Roller coasters. I have one really like, yeah, my oldest is like that too. Like, let's go to the water park with the tube sides that are whatever, 150 feet high. And I'm just like, absolutely not. Uh not there yet. Uh go with your friends, have a good time. And, yeah. I know. Um, yeah, and and I also get motion sickness on every ride I've ever gone on. So I, know. I mean, but 
Oh yeah. Do you, do you have, um, just boys or girls and boys or. Yeah. I have two kids, a girl that's almost 15 and a boy that's almost 12. We're we have okay. spring birthday. So they're right around the corner here. Oh, that's a nice balance. It's a that's great a beautiful balance. balance. And they love each other. They're like besties. They're always hanging out. They're so kind. Um, and so happy and, you know, raising kids isn't always easy. I have this thing on my website, which I never talk about, but I'm going to tell you just in case you're interested. It's uh, so my website is katiejeffcoat.com. And my this thing is called uh, what did I name it? I think I just called it your family meeting. So I have a family meeting where we like talk about gratitude and, you know, try to figure out our day because what we realized was setting our kids up for success in the morning was so helpful but you can do this any time of day, but it's our family meeting. And so we do family meeting and uh, they love it. And it's been so successful to keep us all on track. You know, now that they're older. Yeah. So you start your day with a meeting? We do. So I heard once uh, this question, which I think was so profound and changed so much of my parenting uh, once the kids were older. So this was probably a few years ago. So we were not in like the toddler stage of like, just keep them alive. And the question is this, how do the people I love feel loved by me? How do the people I love feel loved by me? So if I'm asking my children who I love, how do you feel loved by me? And what we discovered was that doing dinner, family dinner, just stresses them out. Somebody is always late. They have activities. They're going this way. They're going that way. It just, it was always like not calm. I mean, the dinner part was calm, but like figuring out how to get to the dinner. It felt like another thing to do. And they said, what we'd really love is for you to set us up for success in the morning. Put your phone down, stand at the kitchen counter with your cup of coffee, Let's say our gratitude. Let's talk about our day. Help me make sure I have everything in my backpack. Help me pack lunches. Uh, I watch them eat their vitamins because they're kind of sneaky and sometimes they put them in their pockets. But, you know, like all like that, like breathe that like affirmation and that like good vibes into me in the morning in my day. Then I can like go to school, know I'm going to have a successful day. I don't like it if like I, my friends – you know, they just run out of the house to the bus and they're always a little bit late and they're just frazzled and whatever. And that stresses me out. I don't want that. So that's what we started doing, family meeting. And it has changed so much about the way we interact. They know they always have a spot. Now my older kid who's in high school, if she has something she wants to share, like with my husband and I, she'll be like, can we have a family meeting? I think we need to have a family meeting. Oh, that's so great. Like, we need to talk about something. This happened at school or this, you know, I did, you know, poorly on a test or whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great tool that you're giving them, right? And 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 that they've agreed to and they've they're using, yeah. right? Um, I'm still in the chaos in the midst of a toddler in our lives. He's three, last boy out of three boys. So, oh my gosh, if I tried to host a family meeting, it would be a great failure in yeah. our home. Um, but I, I do love that. And I will provide the link to your website and that, uh, is it a workbook? Yeah. It's just a one pager. It's just a free yeah. download. Yeah. yeah a easy. free download. I will yeah. put that in the notes and everyone can uh, snag it there. Um, can we talk about your women who impact book? I I'm really curious about it just from the title alone. Yeah. So I was invited to collaborate with 25 other women that are doing the most amazing things in all of the different spheres of life uh, around uh, how we show impact, like how we give impact, like what does that look like? So my story is about money, money mindset. And, um, you know, I grew up very, very poor, like at one point, like was on food stamps and the people that come into your life, good and bad and how that impacts you. So some negative negative things, some positive things, all the things, you know, through the story of life. Uh, and I think it's just so interesting when you get to collaborate with other women. I think that's always so fun. And there's tons of um, opportunities to write stories and books. It's a, this book was a number one international bestseller. 
uh, this publisher, her name is Kate Butler. She does a lot of collaborative books like this, but I mean, if you or anyone is interested in talking about writing in a collaborative book, just find me at katiejeffcoat.com and send me a message or email me at katie at katiejeffcoat.com and ask me whatever questions you want. And I will a hundred percent answer you and get back to you if that's something that's interesting. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is so much power in words. Um, we had uh, an artist, Essie, on, and she was a freelance writer. And here she is traveling around the world doing these artist residencies because she has that powerful skill of writing. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, she's not in, in, in the stage of her life where she has children, obviously, which I love because I, I feel like travel is so important, especially independently um, when you're young. Uh, mm -hmm. because you learn so much about culture and yourself. Um, but writing is just, especially when we collaborate with one another, like it can be extremely, extremely powerful. Um, and so uh, just a reminder to listeners, like an easy way to even start. And we all go back to the artist way with the, have you read the artist way? I've only read parts of it, but yeah. I, my friend Jenna like swears by it as like one of the best books and she's always telling me about it. So I feel like because she tells me about it so much, I've probably uh, digested good. more than I know. <laughs> yeah, she really like made the morning pages very popular, right? And mm -hmm. so if, and and that's, it's just so easy. It's just like a mind dump um, and and or however you process it. I, I don't like writing because I never go back and I barely can read my writing. So mm -hmm. I really love mind dumping on a on a laptop um, and the way you can process and edit back. But like if there is a tool and a way to like even if you're like, I couldn't collaborate on anything with women in writing, um, there's always ways to get there. Never say never. And 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 always, you know, if you're like hearing that. And thinking that is something I would love to be a part of. And you don't feel like you're there yet. That's a tool that um, you can use. And so that was five years ago you did that? Yeah. 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 It feels like forever. And then I really started digging into happiness science right around the time that I was doom scrolling social media when uh, we were all stuck in a global pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, and so then I was feeling like, how do I get out of this? And happiness science really just fell into my lap. And I have been obsessed with it ever since, which is why now I love writing my bi-monthly happiness email and just sharing so much about happiness. Because, you know, to be honest with you, what I found was like those academic journals and the academic scientists that I really like to follow, it's not super user friendly or digestible. And so my podcast is two to three minutes a day and the happiness email is digestible. Like if this interests you click here, that kind of stuff, because mm -hmm. otherwise we never get it. We never, it doesn't get mainstream because it's just too abstract. I, that's how I was finding it. Yeah. Yeah. So you're breaking it down in, in, into a more um, understandable way, accessible, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, accessible for people to find that every day, because as we know, um, when you don't have something as like a habit or a habitual routine, it doesn't quite stick, really. It's not realistic. It's it, it just it's when you fit it into that routine of your life. And I feel like your your podcast is just that like it's like, oh, this can be part of your morning ritual, right? Yeah. Yeah. I have over 600 episodes. You can start at the beginning and. uh do one a day in the last few couple of years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have you read Atomic Habits too? Yes. Yeah. I love that book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yes. It's also when you even go on Amazon, it's like the first, it's very popular too. Um, yeah. So do you think that one day that you will write a book? I don't know. Uh, you know, I feel like I've recently just been called to pivot, to slow down, to find more free time. Mm -hmm. I just uh, downloaded a book on Audible called Free Time, which I've not read yet, but somebody told me it was really good. And I can't think of who the author is, but I will tell your listeners because it's no fun to say a book and then not say <laughs> who it's from because like, who, who wants that? That's so mean. So I'll tell you, the author is Jenny Blank, B-L- 
Blake, B-L-A-K-E, Blake, Jenny Blake, B-L-A-K-E. It's called Free Time. And somebody just told me about it, and I just downloaded it on Audible this morning. And so I'm kind of excited to dig into that. And I have a ninth grader. We go to 12th grade. So I see the end is near, and I'm not ready to let those years pass without being super intentional and present. So Mm -hmm. I'm in a space of really slowing down. And mm-hmm. that's also exciting. It's exciting when you know where the gas is, but you choose to push the brake. Good for you. Mm-hmm. I feel like with and and because we talked about the uh, pandemic, I feel like everything was an emergency and you felt this like rush. It was almost and and I've talked to some other artists and they're like, oh, I'm coming down from something. And I'm like, I know it was like you had to accomplish everything right now. And it was like, I don't know what could we describe that as like it 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 must have been some sort of fight or flight mode and and we've been in it for so long and and I feel that coming down too I feel that slowing down that sense of like okay mm-hmm. maybe you can take a breath here and sit back and and see what we actually want and it's not an emergency yeah I completely agree in fact I was, somebody had sent me an article, I'll send it to you and you can put it in your show notes, um, an article about why we are all feeling emotionally tired and having like this emotional bandwidth right yeah. now in like the first quarter of Q3. Uh, somebody sent me an article. I will find it and I will email it to you and then Yay. you can put it in the Thank show you. notes for your listeners because I thought it was really interesting and it was, it made perfect sense. I could really like resonate with it. Mm hmm. I, I feel it. And and I like even with artwork, I'm like, you know, I'm just going to really take my time. There's no rush with this. I have no emergency. But I, I also worked for years to, you know, as you you did as like a lawyer, you you worked your butt off, you worked your tail off to get to uh, certain points. And I feel like I, I did, too. And I have a giant a 2600 square foot mural project this July, which I mean, isn't, wow. it isn't easy and it isn't no. uh, something that um, I can relax on, but it gives me this freedom and space to be a part of that, be a part of that and sit in it and, mm-hmm. and, and meet with people and be part of the community. And it was a really big uh, shift, I have to say. And, and like we talked about earlier in the podcast, when you said uh, about happiness, like at this point, 2,600 square feet is more. So I'm just going to sit in the, I would stop trying to get more. You don't need to. And why don't you just sit in this and enjoy the moments where you have to yourself, because this is going to be super hard and and very important and so let's just sit in it and 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 it's a truth and reconciliation mural so it's very um, wow it's very impactful and special and I find myself just like even in a workout like today I was like oh I'm supposed to be working out I was just standing there thinking about it and crying (laughs) you know so oh yeah um uh, I think it's it's a place I don't even I'm honored to like sit here, but you're right. There are seasons of our life. There are seasons of our life that we need to just pause and sit in and and then we can look back and say, you know, that was really beautiful. I'm so glad I I did that. Mm-hmm. I agree, and we don't get I, that opportunity often. We don't. And, you know, we have to, you know we have these tribes of women standing around us, right? We all do. And, you know, there's something really special about, you know, having other people cheer you on, whether it's for a pause or for a big project or for the next big thing, whatever that looks like. And I think sometimes we forget that this is just a season. We think Mm. that our, our decisions have to be like all or nothing, but we get to pivot. We get to have seasons in our you know, however we de- de- design our happiness. I have this blog post. I won't tell you everything now because it would be way too long, but it's January, 2023. And it's about happiness soup. It's like, how do you create your soup? Like, these are the ingredients. What's your recipe? Mm. And it's like, this can pivot. This season can change. Like this is, this may be what you need now, but it may not be what you need later. Maybe you're on a book launch and it looks very different than when you're 
you know, doing something else, or you're in the middle of this big project and you've, you went through the design phase, like on paper, right? And now you're actually creating, you know, the mural on the, you know, if it's like, what is it, on the side of a building or a canvas or like yeah, whatever, it's, it's like on, it's on a building, 2,600 square feet. Yeah. On a, in, on yeah. a side of a building. Yeah. So like, what does that look like? That could be a very different season and give yourself permission to be like, look, this is the season when I'm going to be busier, maybe I'm not going to be home for dinner every night, or maybe I am not going to be driving the children to T-ball every practice. And I'm only going to make the games, but this is a season and I get to pivot. It doesn't mean that I'm a bad mom or that my kids aren't my number one priority. And my husband isn't amazing. Cause we all know that your children and your husband are amazing and all your family of everything is all amazing, but you still get to be in a season where this is taking priority. And it doesn't mean that you don't have empathy for or that you don't care about the other things you know i think sometimes yeah. as women we don't get nobody ever like it's not we don't need permission but just this i we don't talk about this idea that yeah sometimes we're going to be in something that's really fulfilling and that we're really excited about and another priority might not get all of its attention but it doesn't mean that that priority isn't equally as um you know important you're exactly right. And I feel like that's a common thing to feel guilt and or um, not even guilt, but approach um, people in situations where they question what you're doing, which is none of their business, really. But like, I feel like um, as a woman that I constantly have to fight for um, time, time yeah. and like uh, being away. And, and it's like, no, I, I, this is what I'm doing and I can. And if you were doing it, like, so if I'm speaking, well, let's just say I'm speaking to my husband. Like if you were doing that, absolutely. No one's going to question you. Not one person is going to be like, you are going to be away for two weeks. Like who's going to do whatever. It's like, they'll figure it out. They'll mm -hmm. figure it out. They'll live. They're in a very good situation. And, and, and asking for help and finding community. And it, we yeah. all know it takes a village. And and that is okay to do things that you've set out to do, accomplish your dreams and do things for yourself. Um, and this is a real conversation that I have had. I, I'm like, I almost parented straight up and, and balanced like my business and staying at home with the kids. Like this has almost been a decade of my life. And I want it to shift. I like, and it will because, you know, they get into kindergarten and all that stuff and everyone uh, gets that uh, free time. But like, I can, I can say I want something different. That is okay. Right. You get to. Yeah. Yeah. I get to, there mm -hmm. we go. I get to have something different. And I remember talking to my neighbor and I'm like, it was about a year or two ago. And I was like, I can't. I got to do something else. I can't do this anymore. Like I can't just be a full time stay at home. The pandemic really did exhaust me um, just because all the kids in our neighborhood were home. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, and a lot of those parents attempted to work from their homes. So I was like outside on the street, <laughs> waddling pregnant and it was hot. And I'm, it's like 30 kids running around and I was so burnt out after that. I'm like, oh, you know, I just, and that's okay for me to say, I'm, I was sick of being a stay at home mm -hmm. and I wanted something different and something more. And, and not only that, I was sick of painting faces for a bit. Mm -hmm. And I admit that and all the listeners know. So it's okay to enter a season of your life. And you did too. You pivoted. You did a big pivot and you're like, yeah. I don't want to do this anymore. Mm-hmm. And we all think we're not allowed. We're not allowed because we're what, 30 something to yeah. be like, I want to change. Yep. You're absolutely right. I think that's what happiness is. It's following your purpose, right? Like deciding, you know, that gets to change, it can change all the time. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. can still find, find happiness in that. And that's what you're supporting. That's what you're supporting in people. You're, I feel like you're empowering them. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I hope so. I hope that you listen to me or you read my story, uh, you know, on social media or books or whatever. And you're like, okay, 
if she can do it, I can do it. I mean, I grew up in a super small town in Minnesota. There's, you know, like there's nothing special about me. Well, there is, there's so many things. Well, so many special things, but, uh, (laughs) you know, at the end of the day, we can all, you know, what I like to say is find our zone of genius, like live in our zone of genius. Like what's your zone of genius? Like I work in companies a lot and I'm like, okay, what's your zone of genius? Like what is the thing you know you're good at that you could do and that you're in flow, just like you were talking about, right? Like where it's not hard, like this is just what you do and you're really good at it and you don't feel like it's hard to go to work and do this thing. What's that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which I think is fun. And Judge Judy said it. She said it best. She She did. I will send you that quote. It's the best. I use it all the time. It's, it's so powerful. It's so simple, but it's so hard at the same time. Right. Mm -hmm. So simple, but I feel like, uh, the history of society is like fitting into that factory sort of industrialization sort of roles. Like they needed people to fill these roles and, and, I don't think that's really, I mean, we still need people to like push buttons and make, make the power go on. Uh, please don't quit your jobs, but um, yeah. Yeah, we definitely do need that. And, um, but I feel like uh, people can find their creative creativity in their voice, even still in, in doing those things. Uh, Cause it's such a huge umbrella and, and happiness means something different for everyone else. But I think with the way um, we are exposed and the way we can connect with one another, you can find a way uh, through self-motivation, self-study, connecting with or listening. I think we have this really great uh, tool right at our fingertips all the time. And and if you want to learn something, it's always right there. And as human beings, that's the greatest adventure is learning. And and learning and growing and evolving into someone who you were meant to be. And the fact that we are all here, um, and I talk about this too it, it, a lot, is like the fact that you made it to this earth. There was a reason, right? right? And I, I know no one likes to talk about the fact that like your grandparents met and then and then you're... <laughs> you know, your parents met and then they, and then that sperm hit that egg. And like, what are the odds that you are here? Right. I know. I know. Yeah. It's pretty crazy. And, and I, I admire you for, you know, seeing something outside of yourself. Um, I am from a small place too. And, and it's easy to get caught up in those limiting uh, beliefs because we didn't have that same amount of exposure um as young people do now right Mm -hmm. right yeah um well i want to thank you so much this was so good and everyone should definitely um tune into your podcast and and get it into their daily habit and their routine it's very positive and uh we will put in the show notes everything that we talked about if we can remember (laughs) (laughs) we will um where can everyone find you You can find me on social at Katie Jeffcoat or at Everyday Happiness with Katie. But really, the place to be is in my email, which is all happy mail twice a month. You can get and subscribe at katiejeffcoat.com. It's J-E-F-C-O-A-T, katiejeffcoat.com. And get on that email list so that I can send you some goodies. And, of course, if you reply... I will personally reply back because it's a real person sending you those emails. So special. Thank you. Um, Thank you for your time today. Super nice to meet you. Thanks. Take care. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. I appreciate your time so much. Um, Thank you to our supporters and thank you to you um, for your time. I sure do appreciate it. As always, I hope you're having a wonderful summer. Again, please share what you're up to, what you're working on, how you're connecting to your creativity in our Color Me Happy community. Um, Feel free to reach out anytime at Brandy Hofer Studios on Instagram. I'm happy to chat. If you love uh, being inspired here, you can sign up for our weekly inspiration newsletter at brandyhofer.ca. And thank you to all of our podcast supporters and partners in our community, BioClean, Disaster Services, Uh, Nouveau Laser and Aesthetic Center, Red Bicycle Communications, and Oasis Hot Yoga and Spin Studio. Oh my gosh, I'm getting good at this.
<laughs> if you'd like to become a supporter and a partner of this show and you love what we represent in our community, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we're happy to chat about that um, and or have you on the show or what that package looks like. So take care, my friends. Love you all so much. <laughs> Thanks for being here. <laughs>